Hola, hello from Barcelona. Today we are going to visit uh, the very famous unfinished church by Antoni Gaudí, the Basilica of La Sagrada Familia. And before we enter, I think it's really nice to have a wonderful perspective, a view from the oldest part, that is the so-called the Nativity facade, that is in the Plaza Gaudí, next to a pond. This is the part more and the part more modern, that The basilica has been under construction since 1882. Antoni Gaudí uh, worked in this project for about 43 years and he could see finish about 10% of the entire basilica. Uh, thanks to the fact that he left us drawings, plans, but mainly models in plaster, it is possible today to continue with the construction. We are in front of the oldest part, the so-called the Nativity facade that represents the birth of Christ and also the first years of Jesus' life. And the four towers that you can see represent four of the towers of the Twelve Apostles. There will be a carillon of bells with 84 tubular bells. I recommend you to have a look to the model that is on display to show you how the entire church is going to look finished with the 18 towers representing the 12 apostles, the four evangelists, Mary and Jesus. The tallest one is going to reach 172.5 meters, representing Jesus Christ, and the shortest 107. We are in this side of the church now, the Nativity facade. There is an interesting drawing showing you how the, this facade is going to look with the different heights and the different symbolic elements of the facade. In another drawing, you can see the glory facade, the future main facade. This facade is going to have an extended bridge that will cover Mallorca Street and then a plaza in front. And finally, the death and resurrection facade that is opposite from where we are now. Antoni Gaudí was conscious that this would be the work of generations to complete what he started. And also he wanted that other artists leave the imprint in the church. This is why the construction board of La Sagrada Familia have been commissioning these artworks to other artists, like the Japanese sculptor Etsuro Soto, who arrived to Barcelona more than 40 years ago. Here you can see a wonderful example of his work with this section with the doors in bronze and constant references to nature and to animals, insects and bugs. Both sides of the central portal of this nativity facade, we can see two columns. And at the base of these two columns, you find two animals. Initially, they look alike, but when you uh, study them from closer, you will realize how the animal to the right has legs. So it's a land totus and means that this part of the church is facing the mountains. And if you move to the other side, you will see how the other animal is a sea turtle with fins because that part is facing the sea, is facing the lower part of Barcelona. When people enter for the first time inside the church, many times they remain speechless uh, to see these splendid colors, the reflections all over, and think that Antoni Gaudí said, the light paints the architecture. He did not design the stainless windows that you can buy today, they had the work of a wonderful, exceptional master glazier, uh, local artist called Joan Villagrau. But Gaudí left some indications. For example, you can see the colors on one side, the nativity facade, are called the colors, the blue mainly. On the other side, you have warmer colors like the red or the yellow. Gaudí left indications about these colors, symbolism. 
because on one side represents the birth, the other the death, or one side is the sunrise and the other side the sunset. You have a wonderful perspective of the entire church from the nave. It's really nice to be able to walk all along this corridor, all the way to the altar. Behind the altar, at the back, you can see the organ pipes. And on top of the altar, you see this kind of umbrella or canopy with Jesus on the cross. And when you look up really to the very, very top, the roof, you can see, you have the impression that you are in a storm forest. And Gaudí, in fact, he was considered an organic architect. He was an architect who learned from nature. Gaudí was able to study a real tree with the trunk, with the knots, with the branches and with the leaves. And he applied all this knowledge into his architecture. This is why he was able to build the columns, the capitals, the arches and the vaults. The church has the characteristic Latin cross shape. So the intersection of the two axes, in this crossing we find the four pinkish columns that represent the four evangelists with the four representations and the names and the symbols. From the street you will be able to see the towers of the evangelists that will support the tallest tower, the one representing Jesus Christ. Antonio Gaudí could be considered a Renaissance man. He was by formation an architect and nowadays he could be considered a structural engineer. He plays this upper story that is for 550 singers, adults, and a second choir surrounding the apse that would be for the children, the white voices. Right. The tower of the Virgin Mary will reach 138 meters and it will be crowned by a pinnacle. On the top, uh, there will be a 12-point star, the morning star, made out of glass and it will be lit up at night. On both sides of the nave, they are exhibited how will be the terminals of the four towers representing the four evangelists. Every sculptor will be about three floors high and will have the symbol that represents each one. Saint Mark, represented by a winged lion. Saint Matthew, represented by an angel. Saint John, represented by an eagle. And Saint Luke, represented by a winged ox. If you have the opportunity, I really encourage you to come to visit La Sagrada Familia during the sunset and you will see these wonderful reflections of the stained glass on the walls. When you work towards the passion facade leaving the church, and on the floor you have a wonderful artwork by a Catalan artist, Domenic Fita, that represents the moment when Jesus arrives to Jerusalem, that is commemorated in Palm Sunday. This facade represents the passion, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as Gaudí had no time to design the sculptures, the construction board of the church, they decided to commission this work to who is considered the most important 20th century sculptor, José María Subirax. They thought that his personal angular style would fit very well to um, represent the dramatic moments of Jesus' life. In this lower part, you can see St. Peter, very sad, because he has denied up to three times knowing Jesus. Also in this lower part, you can see Jesus with the crown of thorns and Pontius Pilatus. And here's a representation of Jesus tied and being whipped on the column. In this lower part also is the very famous scene of the betrayal of Judas with a cryptogram or magic square, the addition of four numbers is always 33, the age when Jesus died.